Hi, it's Tina Brinkley Potts, small business consultant and the creator of the Ask Tina video training series. And today I want to thank you for joining me for this eight vital components to having clients come to you. Um, I, I'm glad that you trust and know that I am going to give you implementable steps actionable steps that you can take right now to really get customers coming to you. You know, I I know that as a small business owner, we a lot of times are reactive and I want to help you change that. And instead of you constantly going out looking for uh, clients that they're coming to you. So we're going to make this more of a proactive step. I promise you too that I will not only tell you how but tell you why and I know a lot of times we don't feel like we're getting that people keep telling us what to do but they don't tell us how like for instance you know everybody says you have to be on social media but they don't tell you how you should be on social media and I'm actually going to do that today so I hope that you are ready to take notes. Um, I have my iPad here with me, and that's what you're actually going to see on the screen is exactly what I wrote down for you through my iPad. So let's get started. The first of the eight vital components is a content-driven website. I know that... Um, it used to be small business owners, especially traditional brick and mortar businesses, because they didn't understand that you can actually drive business to your door through online methods. And even if you're not a traditional brick and mortar business, you can drive them through your virtual door. But you, there are things that you really need to have to be able to do that. And I know one of the old ways of thinking was that your website was for informational purposes only. You really need your website to help monetize your business. And the way to do that is by having a content-driven website. And for me, that's WordPress. Um, I am not an affiliate of WordPress. Um, you can get WordPress installed pretty much for free. So um, I have nothing to gain by telling you this. But if you were to look, and search in your industry go Google the top go Google your industry so let's say you're a plumber and you go and you search plumbers if you get past the paid searches and you look who's there organically nine times out of ten that is a WordPress generated website and if it isn't it has a WordPress blog working on the back end to make it get there so if you don't have to reinvent the wheel, why? If you already know that WordPress can get you found when people are searching online, why would you use anything else? Um, I know that you may have spent a lot of money on an old style website and because that's one of the complaints that I get when I'm talking to a possible new client. Well, I've spent thousands of dollars on this site. And most of the time, if it's generated in something like Flash or something like that, I tell them you really need to start over or begin using WordPress in conjunction with that website. And um, most of the time, the way that I tested it is I say, okay, keep that website and let's just build you a website. And if this website performs and begins to do what I'm thinking it's going to do, then you'll just pay me. And we have a pretty set amount of money that they have to pay me for once they start getting leads. And um, they always get leads. So you want to make sure that you're using a website that is content driven. And again, for me, it's WordPress. I knew that there are other um, content driven site platforms out there but for me none of them work as well as WordPress. Um, I know another thing that many business owners is the aesthetics of their website. Um, a lot of people don't believe that you can make a WordPress site look as attractive as you can a flash site and that is absolutely untrue. 
with graphics and video. There are so many different themes. If you haven't found the right one, just keep searching. There are wonderful, beautiful themes out there that your website can look just like probably the one that you have now. Um, I could probably tell you a thing right now that would match the website that you have. So um, the other reason that it's important that you have a content-driven site is that you get more ranking based on the fact that your website is not static. It should be constantly moving. Um, and aren't we doing that in life anyway? We're constantly moving, constantly evolving. So you want your website to reflect your business. And with your old style site, you would have to play a webmaster to do your updates. And based on the number of updates, that would be how much you would have to pay them for that month. When you can actually do it yourself, even if you don't want to design your own website, you can do, if you can type in a Word document, you can change and add a blog to your website. This is something that you really need to be doing because of the you don't want your website to be static. So um, again, content-driven website is the first one. Number two is your contact info. Many times, especially if you started your business small and you started using your cell phone number, your contact info is not consistent across the different platforms on the internet, especially online directories. So what I would tell you to do is go in and begin updating the online directories and making sure that you have the same telephone number for any online directories that you're listed, especially if you've listed your website with Yahoo, Google, Bing. When you, when you update those things, make sure you're using the same information. Make sure that if you are, are abbreviating, that you continue to abbreviate. Um, you should have a, a template that you use anytime that you go out and you list your business in an online directory. There are many of them. And I can tell you that underneath video two will be a PDF that will contain what I believe are the top 25 directories you should be listed in. So once you get to video two, you can actually take that document and have something you can go implement now. There will be links to each one of the directories I believe you should be listed in, and they're free. So you can actually just go in, type your name, email address, website, all of that. Just make sure you're doing it consistently. If you your address is 123 Main Street and you spell street out for Bing, you should spell street out for Google and all of the rest of the directories. Whichever way you do it, you want to be consistent. Um, the other reason this is important is because the search engines have what are called crawlers. And when things exactly match, they can be linked together and help your ranking go up quicker. So let's just say you have your contact information on your website and it now, um, that same contact information can be found on online directories that will get you found a lot quicker. And every time someone references to your business using that correct contact information, it will help you get found. Um, the one thing I wanna make sure you know is that you could possibly have an online presence and not even know it. Because all I need is your telephone number and I can go rate you on a lot of these um, online directories or rating sites without you putting up a profile at all. So the funny thing is I would almost bet if you've been in business for a while, you already have an online presence out there. You just don't know about it. So you really want to go and claim them, especially if they're positive reviews. You know, even if they're negative reviews, because then you get a chance to answer them. So let's just say you haven't claimed um, a listing because you're like, oh my goodness, somebody 
rated your business badly. Maybe it was a bad day at your business, or maybe it was just somebody who just didn't like you. And they decided they it was their mission in life to give you problems. You can actually go answer these ratings that are out there. And it looks a lot better if you proactively answer them. First, it shows that you care about your online presence. Second, it shows that you're willing to work out whatever the differences are. I remember just the other day I saw um, when I was reviewing before I went to meet with a client that they had a negative review. And when we talked about it and we talked about what had happened that day, um, they went out there and they respond and they respond in a fashion that allowed the customer to come back in so that they could work it out and that it could enjoy um, and, and try to make it into a positive experience. And that's what we should do. We, we can't run from these things. We have to embrace them and figure out a way to make it better. And you can, but you will not be able to do it if you don't acknowledge that this is happening. There, are, I, I know you probably see commercials on TV for places like Angie's List. Well, Angie's List, you do not have to list your company to be rated. It is a consumer driven. So if a consumer goes out there, then guess what? You already have a presence. You know, Yelp used to be for restaurants. It's no longer just for restaurants anymore, but that was how um, the rating started, started there. So you really want to make sure that you're, you are looking for this because you could have a presence out there. It could be linked to the wrong telephone number. Maybe you didn't use your business number then, you used a cell phone number again with the address. Um, and making sure that those things are filled out completely and giving, you know, other information and other media so that they can experience your business long before um, they come in the door. Uh, so, again, number two is your contact info. So we're going to move to number three. And number three is learning to combine your offline and online marketing together. Um, I know that a lot of um, internet marketers are coming out now and saying that all you should do is internet marketing and all of that kind of thing. And I don't believe in that. I believe you evaluate what's working. And if something is working for you, then you absolutely keep it. But if something isn't working for you, then you should either figure out a way of tweaking it a little bit so that it does work for you or maybe it no longer is valid and in that I wanted to kind of just give you a little way of being able to evaluate it and I'm going to use telephone directories as a example um, I believe that telephone directories are less effective than they once were um, that's just my opinion Right now, we're in the age of a smartphone. So if I want to look for something, I don't need to go find the telephone book um, to figure that out. I can just pull up my smartphone and um, bring up a web browser and search for whatever it is that I'm looking for. So, But the only way for you to know if that's working in your business is by asking. If the primary way that people find you and connect with you is through the telephone, when the telephone rings, do you ask, how did you hear about me? It's the easiest way of finding out. You won't know unless you do. Online, um, you, you set up different funnels so that you know which way they came into your business. That way you can test, you can react, you can tweak. So that is one of the biggest things. Um, I would suggest in ways of combining the two, like, for instance, on your business card, you should have something that leads to online, not just to your website, to probably your social media presence, or give a free offer. Um, I know in the Power of One video that comes out next, I talk about a residential house cleaner. And um, I even talk a little bit about how um, a specific case of um, people with asthma or allergies and how to target them specifically. So on a business card could be, here's a 22 point checklist 
to make sure that your house isn't triggering your asthma. That's powerful. Who wouldn't want to know that information? Well, guess what? That information could get new clients looking for you because you've put it out there. So remember, you want to track what's working. Um, you want to make sure you're evaluating, whether it's online or offline. You should know your return on investment. If someone's telling you that they can't track it, um, then I don't think that they're doing you a good service. Um, what they're getting for you, if they're doing online marketing for you or or even if it's offline, you should be able to say the exposure that you're getting. You should be able to say, okay, so based on this amount of dollars that I've spent for this ad, that I brought in this amount of revenue, and then you can calculate your return on investment. If you can't calculate a return on investment, you should really reevaluate whether or not those marketing dollars are being spent in the right space. So... Remember, consumers are looking on their smartphones these days to find solutions to their problems. If you are not online, how can you be a solution to their problem? And then, again, it makes your footwork go further. So if you're out and you're giving out business cards and you have you know, some type of online report that it links back to, that is going to get you another touch in front of your, your prospective client. Remember in marketing, it said that there takes seven touches. I think we're up to seven now. Could be a little bit more. But if they are effective and focused on that person's specific pain or challenge, it's a lot less. So it may be three or four. But the only way of knowing that is by getting interactive into this. So make sure that everything you do, you're allowing it to connect to something else. That way, it will go further for you. So number four is autoresponders. And this is probably uh, one of, out of all of them, this is definitely one of my favorite ones because this one helped me tremendously. Uh, as I stated, when uh, my mother first became ill, I decided that I needed to take care of her myself. I, my father passed away when I was 22, and at that point in time, um, I, I kind of became responsible for my mother. And when she became ill, emotionally, I could not allow anyone else to take care of her because... I felt that she was all I had. And because of that, uh, my two businesses began to fail. I had a salon and I had a home care franchise. And those two businesses, when it came down to the marketing and a lot of the administrative functions, were all about me. And because they were all about me and centered around me, instead of being centered around systems and technologies, so when I began to take care of my mother, those businesses began to fail because I wasn't there manning the fort, per se. And until we learn, you know, things are going to happen all the time in small business. You know, life happens. And sometimes you have to pull yourself out. And when you have to pull yourself out, can your business continue to go? Um, so that's why autoresponders are important to me. Automation is important to me. Um, if you do something the same way every time, you should definitely look to see if you can automate it. Um, I'm not saying not make it personal, but you definitely want to automate it. Um, because I know that one of the biggest problems or challenges with a small business owner, with all of the clients that I have, has always been follow-up. Um, and if you can take the human aspect out of that and program it, then that follow-up happens on a regular basis. So learn about autoresponders and automation. 
I want to make sure you understand what an autoresponder is because I know a lot of people, especially clients that I've had when I first um, evaluated their business, if I ask if they have an autoresponder, they say yes. And most of the time, what they're thinking they have is truly not an autoresponder. It is an email marketing system, but it's not an autoresponder. Right now, autoresponders can come in so many different forms. They can, uh, you can have a voice one, email, text. Um, There's just so many different ways of interacting. But also, autoresponders have certain triggers. It could be a certain date, time that you send something out. You can set it up that based on a certain way someone responds. If they respond using a specific word, that it will trigger a delivery of something being sent out. So an autoresponder is a smart response. It responds based on the amount of time instead of just a broadcast. And that is what we get confused a lot of times in marketing, especially in the old way and the new way of doing things. The old way of doing things was just always about broadcasting. Broadcast your sales message. Broadcast your elevator speech. Broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. The new way of doing things is by sending out much needed information. Not just inf- not just crazy information, but information that is specifically to a problem or challenge that someone is having. So understand that an autoresponder could be email marketing, but it is a lot more and it is a smarter system that will send information out based on a trigger and you want to learn them and get them into your business. Number five is eye candy. And when I'm talking about eye candy, I'm talking about pictures and videos. Um, Online, in my social media presence, I share a lot of inspirational quote pictures. Um, I get, you know, I generate some of them on my own, but a lot of times I'm just sharing the ones that someone else already put already put out into the space and um, I tend to do that because I like to focus on being happy I like to focus on um, especially you know in my life I've had to deal with a lot of loss a loss of people loss of things and um, I had to choose to be happy so I, I make sure that a lot of me who I am is definitely coming across in pretty much everything I do now so You can tell that by the kind of pictures and the kind of things that I share. And you can also tell in the videos. You know, right now you can see my mannerisms. You can see how I interact. You can see um, um, and get to know a little bit more about me based on my voice, based on how I look, based on whatever it is you actually can feel more connected to me because you're seeing me in this video. If I was just to present this on paper, would you be as engaged? Even though this is probably something you need in your business and you know it, if it was a piece of paper, would you sit there and read it? I, you know, a lot of people don't anymore. So it's so much easier. Look at the You know, the number two search engine in the world right now is YouTube, only behind Google. Why is that? Because we would love to have information delivered in video. It's pick up a book, pick up video. I happen to like reading, but video is the way of the future. And if you aren't using video in your business, then you are resisting a quicker way to be able to attract customers to you instead of, again, being reactive, having to go out there and find them. Um, I I remember one of um, the internet marketers that I was training shared a story in one of our groups where he had a restaurant begin doing a um, showing the special of today as they're cooking it. So literally just took his iPhone and 
took his phone and as he was preparing whatever the special of the day was, videotaped it and put it out on their Facebook page and said that the special started selling out. And I began to think, wow, that was really a creative way. But when you think about it, you're actually seeing them put it together, put the spices in. You can almost kind of smell it coming through the video. And it begins to say, oh, wow, I could eat that for today. So lunch special, selling out based on that video. I, and he does it every day. That's something you could do in your business. So if you thought about it, what could you do right now with a video to increase something, a sale, you know, increase your revenue by one of your products or services? That, that was just a great example of, of how to get it done. Um, I know that um, one of the ways another client shares, like, inspirational, she's a life coach. So what she does is she shares um, different uh, pictures that, you know, pictures speak a thousand words. So what she does is say a serviceman is reunited with his child. She puts a quote over top of it or some type of saying of hers, and she sends it out. And, you know, who can resist seeing a serviceman reunited with his child? Uh, I know another one that I remember seeing the other day was um, there was a there was a lady that had cancer, and she had a yellow bandana on her head, and the rest of the the picture was kind of in black and white, and the only thing you really saw was the yellow bandana, and it had a saying about her strength and her perseverance, and it, again, a picture speaks a thousand words. So think of how you can use these things in your business. And number six is there is truly a system to being social. Um, you know, the three big social networking sites, of course, are Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. There are other ones out there, but for now, you know, to get you started, you really should concentrate on those three. Uh, each one of them bring a different way of being able to interact and find more customers. You can geo-target in LinkedIn, just like you can geo-target in Facebook. Twitter, you can geo-target in Twitter too. Twitter's more of a traffic generator um, to send to somewhere else, to send to your website, to send to Facebook, to send to LinkedIn. But LinkedIn and Facebook, you can interact with your prospective client right there. Um, and you really want to make sure that you're integrating your content-driven website with these things. So the, the biggest thing you want to know, though, is when you are on social media, you should think of that just like the way you used to network. When you networked, you went in, you got to know other people. You asked about them. You know, by the time you begin you've been networking for a while, you start knowing that such and such has three kids or, you know, this one just moved here recently. You want to get to know people when you're interacting on the social networking sites too because that's exactly what it is. It's networking. If you are there and all you're doing is broadcasting messages that are saying, buy my stuff, you, you're not getting anywhere and you're not serving yourself or anyone else by doing that. I know that that may be how some people have taught, but that's just not true. This is an active community. When you're on Facebook, it is a very active community. And just like in the other two. And you want to make sure that you're engaging and you're talking about other things other than just buy my stuff. Um, I know one of the, the, the things that happen is we will passively hide you. Um, and I'm going to give an example of Facebook. 
I belonged to a online networking group that actually started as a Yahoo group. So that tells you how long this group has been around. And I used to love interacting in that group. And it moved to Facebook. And of course, I moved with it. And now I have hidden all of the notifications because the moderator of the group hasn't been moderating or has been allowing too many spammy type messages. There is one particular person that has been putting out messages and literally the messages say something to the effect of, do you know how you can turn $40 into 500? And that message kept popping up every hour on the hour. And, you know, got tired of it. So I just passively hid the group. Um, I didn't uh, discard the group. I just hid the group. So you, if you're doing that right now, you could have a lot of friends attached to your profile or even to your fan page, but they can just hide your messages if that's all you're doing. So why not show a little bit more of yourself? You really want to give of your personality. You want people to know who you are because in the internet space, we might not be in front of you specifically where we can touch you, but we can get to know you through the internet by showing your personality. You no longer have to be stale. You no longer have to present this persona and think that that's what people get. Um, look at all of the employers right now and recruiters that are looking at what you're doing on social media so that they know the real you. Because when you present them with a resume, they're like, okay, this might be what she's saying on paper. However, this is what I see. So being transparent and showing people who you are really is the best way of doing things. Um, I literally sometimes on my Facebook profile I'm talking about if I'm having a bad day and why I could be having a bad day. I'm also talking about, you know, different things that inspire me. Who you see on that page is who I am. I live that way every day. I, I think we need more of that. We need more of a transparency because I don't want to walk into your business and you've presented it one way. And when I get there, it's another. And we also don't want to just hear, buy my stuff. If um, And I know a lot of network marketers, um, and I'm not picking on them because I know a lot of people that are network marketers, and they do a better job and a wonderful job at it. But I, when there are so many um, involved in the same companies, you really need to be able to set yourself apart in how and why someone should interact and buy from you. And if you think it's only because you're the one that's constantly saying, buy my stuff, it doesn't work. So as a business owner, you don't want to do that. So we're going to go, um, you know, the other thing too I wanted to talk about as far as social media and social networking is if you decide that you're going to hire another internet marketer or something to do the work for you. Understand that it really isn't about big branding as some would like to believe. You know, small business is not Coca-Cola and does not have Coca-Cola branding dollars. So you don't want to do the same things that people are recommending for companies like Coca-Cola. And I know that this is not going to be the popular um, belief out there, but for me and for my client, what I'm telling you is the absolutely has worked for us. And one of the things that happened, and we all fell for it, is that, oh, you need a lot of likes on your Facebook page. You need a lot of Twitter followers. Unless you have a national audience or even a international audience and have something that can be delivered to an international audience. You really need, should not be buying any kind of like-based campaigns or 
follower based campaigns unless they are targeted specifically to your niche or to your geographic area. And a lot of people don't believe that. But I'm going to give you an example. I had a client come to me that was recommended by another client. And when they came, of course, they were not real happy with anyone in the internet marketing space. So what I found out was that the previous person that they had dealt with um, told them that they were going to get them a thousand likes to their Facebook fan page. And what this person did was went out and bought likes to their Facebook fan page, which had um, likes in countries that this client would never service. So even though this client had all of these likes, none of the people that were liking the page were ever going to buy because they weren't in the area to buy. This client was a, um, I think it was like a, uh, had this, this, this service and they could only do it in like a 60 mile radius because after that it wasn't cost conducive to try to do it. So when that happens, now you have all of these people, but they are never going to buy. So guess what? This client believed that Facebook could not work to help grow their business, but they weren't looking in. Delaware and Pennsylvania for their client, they had something that was five countries over. You don't want that. And you want to watch out for that. So yes, these things do work for your business, but it won't work if you're not digging past the surface. And I'm hoping that's what I'm doing here with you now, that you're feeling like we're getting in deeper past the surface, past just saying you need to be on Facebook, you need to be on Twitter, that you're understanding you, if you're going to look for people to like your page, if you have a local business, you need local likes. If you are a business that are targeting women between the ages of 13 and 30, then you need to target and get people liking your page who are in 13 or 30. Yes. If anybody else comes, that is additional and could help you too. But to get customers finding you, you want to look for your specific demographic. And a lot of big branding doesn't do that. They're having the philosophy of everyone can use this service. Well, they have dollars that support that. You want to make sure that you're getting the best return on your investment, whether it be time or money by having someone else do it. So now we're going to get to number seven. And number seven is if content is king, then being social is queen. And when I'm talking about content being king, I'm talking about making sure that your site and everything you do is Google friendly and understanding what it takes to be Google friendly. Google indexes your content. They look for backlinks. They look for pictures. They definitely rank video and understanding how to link all of that together is really important in helping other people find you. And a lot of this stuff we call on-page SEO. On-page SEO talks about what should be on that page for it to rank properly in a search engine like Google. And I know it sounds like a lot. And I know you're probably thinking that you couldn't do this, but you absolutely could. And because once you know it, you know it. Once you know what a header tag is and how to word it, you'll know how to do it forever. The same thing with your pictures and, and your content. You know, yes, it might take a little time to generate the content, but once it's out there in the internet space, you've done it, and it can continue to rank and attract clients and customers to you. And so what I mean about being social is queen. If we're worried about Google, we also really need to worry about Facebook. Facebook has over... 800 million users 
And I, I know that that number um, may not mean anything to some people because some people are teaching Facebook ads and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a Facebook ad. But what I am saying is that you need to understand how to connect and get into the news feed of other people. And the way of doing that is making sure your website and your Facebook is interacting together. You can do that in a lot of different ways. Um, Facebook actually has their own plugin for WordPress now, which is phenomenal. Um, but, you know, there's been a lot of plugins where you can have commenting on your Facebook page and you can have the likes. You can actually get people to like your Facebook page from your website. So there's a lot of different things. And what happens when someone does that is it shows up in their news feed. Um, the last statistic that I remember was that um, most users of Facebook have 130 friends. So let's say there is a like button on this page where this video is and you click that like button it's going to show in your news feed that you liked this video which is great so now not only have you watched this video but the people that are connected to you in your Facebook you've now told them that you liked this video so what is better What's the best way of getting another in front of another person by recommendation from someone they know? <laughs> best way. So this is why that is so important. Um, you want you want to make sure that you anything you're doing on the internet that you're being mindful of. How is this going to interact with Google, and how is this going to interact with Facebook? And yes, I know that there are other search engines out there. But um, their algorithms are similar to Google, and Google still is number one. So if you concentrate on number one, you can definitely get real close to the other ones. So number eight is the power of one. Um, and I'm only going to get into this briefly in this video because the next video after this one is all about the power of one. And I'm actually going to go very deep into it because I want you to be able to do it for your business. So what the power of one is, is it means that we will concentrate on one product or service. We will concentrate on one customer and how doing that and exploiting the story and knowing the, the ins and outs of that customer and your product or service and how it relates to that customer will explode your business. So, uh, again, you know, I'll give you the story of Paul. Paul is one of my clients that um, has baseball cans. And... I met him three weeks before, um, not this summer, last summer, before his uh, summer camps started. And basically, he showed me his system and showed me, um, talk, told me what it was that he wanted to do and who it was that he wanted to attract. And for me, attracting 9 to 17-year-old boys to a baseball camp really meant that I needed to get to the mothers. Um, I didn't need to get to the kids. I needed to get to their moms because it was their moms who were going to decide whether or not to pay for it as well as whether or not um, if they already had arrangements for what they were going to do in the summer, especially if the mom was a, a working mom and needed to provide for daycare. So because it was a needed to happen pretty quickly. The camp started in three weeks. I decided we were going to combine some of the things that I just talked to you about in this video. So what we did combine is we created 
a content driven website and it was a one page content driven website which a lot of people called a landing page um, that had a video so that's two of the eight that had um, that video talked about the summer camps when it was and Paul actually shot the video himself I told him pretty much how we were going to do it we we invited them to learn more about the summer camps and the benefits of the summer camps by entering their name and their email address. And then we delivered that information systematically through the autoresponder. And what happened is Paul tripled his attendance over the previous two years in three weeks. And when he shot the video, he still had the testimonial video for me. He still had um, some weeks left to go. So I'm not exactly sure how he finished up, but I know at that point in time, he had tripled his attendance. And, you know, that may not be typical results for you, but isn't it worth a try? If I can demonstrate, I just demonstrated that it worked for my client, that it works for me, that it works for a lot of my other clients and are working for a lot of people across the country. Wouldn't you want to begin to explore this in your business? And I know for me, when I was sitting home with my mother, I was going, wow, there are so many people in this internet space that are building large amounts of wealth. I'm wondering how I can apply that to small business because that's what I love to do. I love being out in front of people and believe me, we've been able to find a way. So I just want to make sure that you understand the power of one. It is no longer the brochure style way of marketing where you try to push as much information into one piece of paper and give it to someone. No, you really need to talk more about the experience. You need to talk more about um, what it is that they would get from you. And that's by doing it in the power of one. And we'll go into that in much more detail in the next video. So I want to go ahead and summarize, again, the eight things. So number one was a content-driven site. Number two was making sure your contact info is consistent across everything you do, that you combine your efforts, that your offline and your online efforts are combined, like the cogs of a wheel. You know, if a spoke is missing out of a bicycle tire, that it, start, it, it still works. It doesn't work as effectively, but when more of them aren't there, that, that wheel gets a little weak. And it's the same thing now with this marketing. I know you might not have relied on this in the past, but if you combine them, it will make you work so much more efficiently and will get so many more customers looking for you instead of the other way around. Uh, the next one was number four was autoresponders. Again, for me, it's made a massive amount of difference in my business. I know that it makes a massive amount of difference in a lot of people on the online space, um, whether they have a traditional business or a an online business, whichever one they have, it makes a big difference and you should be using them too. Pictures and videos. Again, um, I hope that you can see my sincerity in this video um, because you're actually, even though you're not physically in front of me, you still hear my voice, you see my face, you see my mannerisms. So that's why video is important. Um, Again, not just for that reason, but also for the reason that most people are watching videos daily on the internet. Again, YouTube, number two search engine. If you're not on YouTube or actually using YouTube for other methods, you're missing out on a whole lot of people that are actually there. Uh, the next was a system to being social. No longer are we having the stuffy image. We're showing our personality. It's okay to be you. I want to see some version of you that you believe you have to be in order to be successful. Just be you. No longer say, buy my stuff. <laughs> you know, yes, you, you're definitely going to ask for the sale, but interact with us a little bit more. 
it, it just works a whole lot better. Uh, uh, mind, be mindful of Google and Facebook in everything that you do. If you're putting something out there, you want it to either be indexable by Google or that it is you're using the viral capabilities of Facebook. And then, of course, last but not least is the power of one. And that's how understanding and concentrating on one instead of having a philosophy of everybody needs my product or service. And I, I remember actually going in to visit with a client and they told me that. And I told them that if you continue to say that, you're not going to have anybody coming through the door because nobody's going to know how to relate to that. You really need to concentrate on, and not just saying that that's the only person that's going to buy that product, but when you specifically target your marketing, you can actually get more into the feeling and the emotion, as well as to the pains and challenges that that typical um, client market would have. So you really do need to be able to target that is, you know, I'm going to wrap this video up, but what I would like for you to do before you go is if you have a question about anything that I talked about is, you know, that has to relate to small business consulting, online marketing, um, how to take your business from point A to point B, ask the question below. What I'm going to do for video number three is going to be, I'm going to answer the top 10 questions that I get. Because basically when I look at them, I, I know that I'll find that some of them are quite similar. And I'm going to find the top 10 and I'm going to answer them in a video. You know, right now, if I go spend the day with a client, they're paying me thousands of dollars. And you can actually ask your question and get it answered in a video by putting question in the comment feature below and hopefully it will be able to help you gain clients a lot quicker and having them come to you so I hope you didn't just watch this video that you actually took notes and if you didn't watch it again take notes it will help you if you implement just one thing um that I talked about, it will make you go further, faster. Implement the online directories. If, you know, go out there and just Google your name and you'll probably find, especially if you're a restaurant or something to that effect, that you may already have an online presence. You know, you could already have Facebook likes for your business just because um, someone like me came into your business and checked in, even though you might not have a fan page yet. And can you imagine you could already have somebody already started the work for you? You just need to go finish it. So until the next time, again, the next video is going to be about the power of one. And until the next time, bring light and love to someone every day. We don't know how long we're going to be here or even how long they will. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one for the power of one. Bye now.